Welcome ladies and gentlemen to a video about Dynamo 2.0 uh, I just heard it was released this morning So I, uh, all morning I've played with it a little bit around And tested some things and tested some other stuff And I thought alright let's make a video about it So you can see the changes as well For all the changes uh, I'll put a link in, the, link in the description Where you can find all, all the changes for Dynamo 2.0 But for this video I made a, a list Right here, this is my list, and these are the uh, the chapters that I want to uh, explain to you. So we have choose your version, interface, auto lacing, single items and lists, dictionary, oh, dictionary, color palette, and Python. These are all the chapters that we're gonna uh, talk about in this video, and let's go right into it. All right, we're back in Revit. Uh, apparently you have to restart your Revit because if you choose Dynamo and you already opened uh, 2.0, it will reopen 2.0. So I restarted my Revit. And if I click right now on Dynamo, you can see I can select my version. So I can say, all right, I want 1.3 or I want 2.0. And this is a major change to it because right now you can choose your version. This allows us to use the 1.3 scripts and the 2.0 scripts. Um, a quick note, you cannot open 2.0 scripts in 1.3, but you can open 1.3 scripts in 2.0. But uh, during some changes to the API of Dynamo, uh, some scripts or nodes won't react uh, as you expect to do. So let's open 2.0. All right, we're back in Dynamo 2.0. And the first thing that uh, I noticed when I opened 2.0 was that the library is different. So right now you have the core nodes or the built-in nodes you have on the top of, of your library and you have you have a, a separator with add-ons and below that you have all your packages and your custom nodes and I already load some co uh, custom packages from uh, well example clockwork core and I noticed that not all nodes are, are correctly loaded the developers of this custom packages need to do some work to let the, their package work with Dynamo 2.0 but I believe they're already working on it so the first thing on my list that it's a major change to Dynamo is auto lacing. So let's go to uh, the example that I made for this video for auto lacing. All right, here I made a setup for explaining how the auto lacing works. Uh, the auto lacing is a, a, f a new feature in Dynamo 2.0, and uh, what it does is it automatically chooses the lacing. So here I have a lacing of shortest. You can see that on the on the left corner, or you can see this on the right corner, there's one uh, line. And if I choose, for example, uh, lacing, I choose longest, you can see I have three lines right now. And this uh, new feature, Dynamo will choose the lacing for you. How does it choose the lacing? Well, that's according to the inputs of the node. So I have here auto, and let me say this to uh, shortest. And if we run it, it's already run, you can see here, my input is uh, a list of 11 items and I repeat it three times and then I want to add three to all the items. So here you see with the auto lacing, it returns my th uh, 33 items and with the shortest, it returns only 11 items. So it's reacting to the list inputs, how many items there are and how many lists there are. And then choose the best option of lacing what Dynamo thinks is good. So that's about the auto lacing. All right, this is the next item where I'm excited about. Uh, single items are no longer promoted to list automatically and what this means is normally if you use uh, a list 0 to uh, 3 so 4 items and you put it in point by coordinate and you put it in the x and in the y value and you put a 1 in the uh, z value it can be 0 as well though but then it will return list 0 and then another list 0 and there one point so every point is in a different list that's what happens in 1.3 and now in 2.0, it combines those lists. So if you want to recreate the 1.3 output, you need a list and then chop. Uh, where is the chop? Because the search uh, doesn't work properly. That's my opinion. I don't know if they made it like this. Because if I type in list chop, it returns nothing. So I don't know if this is a bug or something. They need to relook at it. So let's see where's chop. Here's chop. 
And as you can see, the name is list.chop. If I type it in here, nothing returns. So that's a little bit weird, but I hope they will fix this bug if it is a bug. I hope so. Uh, but back to the example. So if we have our point here, let's put it in the list and let's say here one, because I want length of one and I want it for layer two, I think. Let me quickly see. Yes, this is the result what Dynamo 1.3 gives. And in 1.2, you get this result. So as you can see, normally you get this back and you need to flatten the deepest list, list number two, and then you get this result as well. So I think this is a really great future uh, for Dynamo, especially uh, because you don't need to use uh, as many flattened nodes. So let me close this and close this one. And uh, the next example, I was really excited about this point, is they added dictionaries to Dynamo. Uh, you have here on the top of your library, you can click and here you have all the dictionary notes. These are all new notes. Uh, in 1.3, I used the notes of, I believe, Lunchbox and an and extension and custom, uh, a custom package. And now Dynamo has added uh, dictionary into it and the dictionary works the same as in python if you're familiar with python you already know how the dictionary works but uh, i think this is really great because right now you can create for example i made an example here so you can say okay all right dictionary by keys and value you can give in the keys in my case this h to key h to key and the value for every item is uh zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so what it does is it makes a dictionary. And in the dictionary, you can see here, A is the key and zero is the value. It's just a list only with pairs. And as you can see here, there's no list here. It, it says dictionary. And the other thing that uh, caught my attention was if you have a list, let me here, for example, it says list, you have layers and you have uh, the number of items inside it. And with the dictionary, you don't have that future. I don't know if they need to add this future to it, but that was something that I noticed while I was uh, playing around with this. And and uh, the other new notes are you can get the dictionary value at key, so you can give in a key, and it will retrieve the values of that key. Uh, you have the dictionary remove key, so you can remove an item for your dictionary. In this case, I removed item A. As you can see, there is no A with a zero in it anymore. And in this dictionary, there is right here. And you can update your dictionary. You can overwrite your value at a certain key. So this is my key. My key is A. And I overwrite it with the value test. And as you can see in the output, A is not zero anymore, but it's test. Uh, one thing that I noticed, by the way, you cannot uh, use numbers as key. So in the keys, it says it needs a string or a list of string. If, and if I connect the number, you can see warning dictionary by keys value expected arguments type string, but was called with inter. So uh, I don't know if they can update this because normally you can use everything for a key and for a value. And the last thing that I want to talk about for dictionary is the, the, the getters actually. So you can get the keys, all the keys of your dictionary. As you can see here, these are all my keys. And you can get your uh, values as well. It's the same as the keys, only it, re only it returns the value. And you can also return them both. And what I noticed, what I really like in a 2.0 Dynamo, is that it doesn't say uh, zero list and one list, but it says keys list and value list. And here you have all the keys and here are all the values. And this is, uh, this goes also for the list boolean. All right, this is uh, what I'm talking about. So let's say the mask is uh, true, for example. And my list is, well, let's say 0 0.10. And as you can see here, it gives back a dictionary. Why is it giving back a dictionary? All right, welcome back. I figured out what was happening. It is a dictionary, actually. Uh, this is new and they did it in a dictionary because they can now rename this uh, this name actually uh, in the previous version in 1.3 it was standing here zero list 
the same as what's standing here. And on out list, there was standing uh, one list. And they changed it and I like it actually because it's a lot more, you have more overview of your data. Because if I expand this and this, uh, normally you didn't know really what was uh, my out list and what was my in list. It was just um, use a watch note. So watch note. I always used a watch note for that and connected the output or the input. Uh, the, it was just the, uh, the output what I needed. So that's great actually that they do that. But yeah, let's go back to uh, our dictionary. There was a, a quick example actually. Oh yeah, one thing that I want to mention, by the way, uh, if you use a code block and you want to create a list, uh, these brackets are now new for the list. This one and this one. If you use, uh, I first used this one. This is a 1.3. They uh, change the syntax of this. So as you can see here, curly braces are no longer used for list creations. Use square brackets instead. Um, let's see, did I forget? Oh yeah, we got one uh, note to go. And this is the dictionary count. It just counts how many items there are inside your dictionary. And this is uh, a really handy note right now because you cannot see inside your dictionary how many items there are. As you can see here, there's no number. So let's go to the next uh, example. The next thing on my list is the color palette. And this is a really good note actually. Normally, if you want uh, for color, color, uh, you can use this note, color by e, uh, by A, R, G, and B. So your blue, your green, your red, and your alpha. And you uh, needed to input some values, some numbers between zero and two, five, five. And the inputs represent the color. Now you can uh, click on this, this arrow and you can uh, select a standard color or you can go to advanced and you can make your own color or make your own color. You can choose a color with this dot or you can use the slider to change between colors. And if you select it, all right, this is done. And now if you open it again and you go back to standard, you can see here recent colors. So it will remember your uh, colors that you used. The only problem with this is if I close the file and then reopen it, uh, this recent color is gone. And it's the same as I copy and paste it. So let me copy and paste this. Let me place it over here and if I open it, you can see no recent color. So it doesn't copy the recent color uh, action. Let me delete this and let me delete this. Uh, let's go to the last example. And I was really excited about this last example. Uh, the last example is Python. And I'm really excited about this, uh, this uh, future that they added to it. Because right now, or actually in 1.3, if you opened your script like this, you, can, you can't do anything inside your Dynamo. Uh, except for if you say save changes or close it. Uh, right now you can open two scripts at the same time. So let me open this script. You can see, and let me open this script as well. And as you can see, you can open two scripts at the same time. And um, you can see the title in here. Here it says test and here Python script. And it's corresponding to the name of the node. So let me close. Now let's just open it by the way because there's a new feature to it as well. Let me just, uh, let me see how do I wanna, yes, like this. So like this, um, the new, there are two new buttons. You have a run button and you have a revert button. And don't get too excited about the run button that it's a debugger or something, because that's not. Uh, this button allows you to run the script, the whole Python script, and all the nodes that are behind the script. So for example, my output is a string of test. And I say here, all right, this output is the input. Like this. And I connect it. I connect my two scripts and I say, all right, I run. And now if I go to the output of this script, oh, sorry, of this script, you can see it outputs test. So it runs the Python script while you are still in the editor. So that's a really big change to it. Um, let me close this and save our Python script. Uh, let's reopen it because there's another button, revert. And this button uh, allows you to go back to the script uh, when you open it. So what this means is, for example, I have my script over here and I say, all right, uh, it's smart. Don't import Autodesk design script uh, geometry. 
just import auto like this and now i can say all right run it and oh i got some errors a uh, string in line four oh I, I didn't know what was standing over there I, I don't remember you can just click on the revert and it will go back to its original state let's save this and the last item for python that was really excited to me is you can make your own templates right now so if we go to uh, python and we click on it here we have a python script and if i double click on it you can see here test python template and the most excited about uh, this future is if i go to my uh, python editor i have here a python editor and this is the script for my template and i say here uh, for example out is 10 and i save my python script and then well, i'll save this i save my dynamo file and if I then reopen or add a new Python script to my uh, workflow, so this is a new Python script, and if I open it, you can see out is 10. It immediately updated the, the template for the Python script. And if I see if it's working, no, why it's not working? I made a mistake somewhere, I was probably. Yeah, needs to be capitalized. Yeah, that's the mistake, sorry. But it will immediately work. That's uh, the point of this. And this got me really excited because now you can save all kinds of scripts. And the one thing that you need to be aware of is you need to uh, name it Python template, but you can paste all kinds of script in here, in your Python editor, save it, and then, and then immediately open it in Dynamo. Um, so that's it for this video. Uh, as I said in the beginning of the video, I will put a link uh, to the website where all the futures are, where all the changes are. And I hope you like this video. Bye bye.